Okay, so I'm doing a video of my reaction to um, Big Apple Massacre, which I heard is really creepy and worse than Cupcake, so let's hope this isn't going weird. Listen to an audio recording, so deal with it, okay? <laughs> just silly, felt like he said pleasantly. He then went to a toolbox and took out the and took out a rusty knife with a jagged blade and dropped it in front of the three fillies. I'll take off those gags now, he said. First one of you to scream gets their tongues cut out. He took off Tweety Bell's gag first. She looked up at him with terror, but managed to stay quiet. Next was Scootaloo. She let out a strangled whine and was breathing heavily, still in horrendous pain from her broken wing, but managed to resist the temptation. Finally, he removed the gag from his sister, Abigail. She stared at him with her large, round eyes, filled with fear and incomprehension. This was Big Macintosh, after all. Her big brother and the gentlest of souls, wasn't he? Surely this was just a horrible joke, but... She had seen what he had done to Scootaloo's wing, and it was definitely no joke. She took a deep breath. Applejack! Big Macintosh shoved his hoof in Apple Bloom's mouth, silencing her scream. He sighed and shook his head. Oh, I told you not to scream. You know, you should really listen to your big brother. I'll, I'll scream, and scream again, and Applejack will hear. Said, flattering. You know, I kind of hope you do. After all, I still need to give an Applejack for that injury she gave me last Applebuck seat. You want Applejack to join y'all down here? Scream away. I for one welcome the company. But now, the business. Big Macintosh picked up the knife and loomed over the cowering Apple Bloom. He pinned her down with a powerful hoof and struck the knife into Apple Bloom's mouth. Sweetie Belle vomited at the sight, the thick yellow chunks and acidic-smelling liquid splattering heavily on the floor. Scootaloo managed not to be sick, but rather gasped and sobbed and choked with panic. Big Macintosh forced open Apple Bloom's, blood, Apple Bloom's mouth and with some effort cut out the tongue. Apple Bloom tried to scream, but her mouth was too full of blood, so it was more of a muted gurgle. After a short while, she collapsed, tears streaming from her eyes falling unconscious from the shock and the pain. Big Macintosh then took the tongue and rolled it in the puddle of putrid vomit on the floor. He smiled at Scootaloo. You hungry? Scootaloo shook her head vigorously and cast him a, de a defiant glare. If Rainbow Dash was here, she would kick the crap out of you. You, you maniac! Big Macintosh shrugged. Well, she ain't. Anyway, I won't be so sure about that. Rainbow Dash ain't as tough as she likes to make out. He shoved the vomit-covered tongue into Scootaloo's mouth. Oh. Poor Scootaloo. And used his hoof to clamp her mouth shut. Don't you go trying to spit it out now, he said calmly with a little laugh and as if Billy struggled and squirmed. Didn't your mother ever tell you how important it is to chew your food? Scootaloo closed her eyes and flapped her one good wing desperately, eventually swallowing Apple Bloom's tongue. Big Macintosh, still holding the writhing Scootaloo down with his strong hose, then mounted the orange filly and slid his penis into her tight virgin pussy. I did not see that coming. Raping her for several minutes while Sweetie Belle watched, trembling with revulsion. Apple Bloom was still out cold, blood pouring from her torn up mouth. Cutie my crusaders rape victims. <laughs> Big Macintosh said with tender mockery as he fucked Scootaloo, followed by a gentle chuckle. Guess y'all found your purpose in life now. Your special talent is getting raped. Hehe. <laughs> yep. Eventually, he withdrew from Scootaloo and gripped her head tight and re repeatedly punched her hard with a hoof in the face. <laughs> Causing her nose to shatter and squirt with blood. He scooped up some of the blood and some of Sweetie Belle's vomit with his tongue and held it in his mouth so that it mixed with his saliva and then brought his mouth close to Scootaloo. Aww. Oh. Brought his mouth close to Scootaloo's and spat the rank mixture into her mouth. He clamped his hoof over her mouth and held her nose until she gagged, and eventually had no choice but to swallow. <laughs> as Scootaloo wrenched and spat and cried, he turned to Sweetie Belle. He grabbed her easily, as she was too shocked and traumatized to respond. And with apparent amusement, he rammed her horn up Scootaloo's ass. <laughs> the horn was too, was too big and hard. So the skin around Scootaloo's ass ripped and blood and fecal matter first trickled and then poured profusely down on the Sweetie Belle's face, as well as urine as Scootaloo pissed herself. 
Keep doing that, Tweety Bell, he said. The unicorn carried on pushing her horn up Scootaloo's anus, slowly but shortly. Her normally well-groomed pink and purple mane was now stained a reddish brown, glistening with the wetness of piss and blood. If you stop, I'll come over there and uh, get creative. I might seem a bit dense, but I'm actually quite a creative stallion, you know. Big Mac does shed with a wink. He yup. He went to Apple Bloom and penetrated his little sister's unconscious body with his hard cock. While he violated her, he got another knife. This one sharp and shiny and sliced open her flank, causing her glistening intestines to flop out wetly onto the floor. He glanced over, and was pleased to see that Sweetie Belle was still using her horn to anally penetrate Scooter, and her face was now completely covered in blood and feces and urine. He turned his attention back to Apple Bloom, scooped up her crimson entrail. Crimson? Nice. Scooped up her crimson entrails and wrapped them around her neck, still fucking the filly. And with his front hose, he pulled and pulled and pulled until it was wrapped so tightly around Apple Bloom's neck that it broke her windpipe. She was now surely dead, but Big Macintosh continued fucking her furiously until her body began to lose form and collapse into a quiver, amorphous mass of fur and blood and flesh. The perineum had fallen away, leaving a single red and raw gaping void. He carried on until he was fucking nothing but a single swollen and bloody orange and then discarded his baby sister's carcass as though he were, as though she were nothing more than a rotten apple core. He then took the knife and grabbed Sweetie Belle and tossed her aside. He forced himself into Scootaloo's ruined anus and then took the knife and cut from her ass in a sweeping motion up to her belly, and all her innards fell out. He then grabbed her head, twisted and tore it clean off, using his immense strength, and fucked it in the mouth and then tossed it aside. Interesting. He then had sex with her headless body, both in the vagina and the ass, until he got bored. Well, Sweetie Belle hasn't been damaged in any way yet, besides, you know, getting covered. But she hasn't been, like, cut or anything. Sweetie Belle was the last remaining cutie mug crusader. She was herself barely conscious, overcome with the nauseous stench of blood, shit, and piss that covered her horn and face. Big Macintosh pinned Sweetie Belle down with his hoof and plunged the knife into her green eye and twisted, causing vitreous fluid to dribble out onto the handle. At that, Sweetie Belle let out a throaty whine and involuntarily emptied her bowels, and the aroma of fresh urine and feces filled the apple cellar once again. He withdrew the knife and did the same to the other eye, each time holding her tight and striking his hoof into her mouth to silence her agonized scream. He licked the vitreous fluid that had leaked onto the new, and then methodically began cutting and hacking at her front left hoof using the rusty knife. The knife was quite blunt, so it took the, Hercu the Herculean effort to get through the skin, bone, and cartilage, but eventually the bone splintered and the leg came off. He did the same to her other legs, until all four were amputated and nothing remained but bloody stumps, with slimy white ligament and broken bone shards hanging out. At some point, Sweeney Bell had passed out, the overwhelming pain too much for her to bear. He then used the knife to gouge out her left eye and jammed his penis into her eye socket, penetrating repeatedly deep into her brain. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's new. Enjoying how tight her skull felt around his hard shaft and how warm and squishy the brain matter felt against the tip of his throbbing penis. <laughs> As he did, he twisted Sweetie Belle's neck. After he had finished skull-fucking her, he cracked open her skull with the swift stamp of the hoof and bent down and ate some of the exposed pearl. <laughs> Taking care to spit out a few fragments of skull bone that had got mixed in as he chewed. It was warm and slimy and tough, and stuck to the back of his throat. He swallowed, and then raped Sweetie Belle in the ass until it tore open, and his engorged penis was smeared with what little fecal matter remained in her rectum. He hasn't even ejaculated yet. What is this? He took one of Sweetie Belle's detached legs and shoved it inside her ass, and then fucked Apple Bloom and Scootaloo's bodies the same way, forcing the amputated limb in, hoof first, as far as it could go. He thought how strange it was that the still, how strange it was that the still lumps of torn flesh that he was fucking with Sweetie Belle's leg had been so vibrant and alive such a short time ago. But now, all three were dead, and he finished by spurting his voluminous 
voluminist load into Apple Bloom's destroyed back set. There we go. He watched with satisfaction as the semen and blood and shit mixed together, forming a foamy maroon pool. <laughs> description, description. He bent down and greedily lapped up some of it with his tongue, oh, pressing his tongue deep into her anal cavity as to not miss any, letting some dribbling down his chin. It tasted foul, of course, a rancid, tangy slime that burned his throat, but it felt so satisfying. He swallowed the filthy goo and wiped his mouth with the hoof. It was done. Big Macintosh would finally get his piece of twine. Big Macintosh, you down there? It was Applejack. He looked at the disfigured corpses of the three Phillies, all now barely recognizable to, as the oh-so-sweet cutie mug crusaders, and realized he felt strangely unsatisfied. It had all been a bit too quick and easy. Now Applejack, that would be a challenge. She was Ponyville's best athlete, after all. She even had the prize pony of Ponyville trophy to prove it. And, of course, he still hadn't forgiven her for that injury. He felt his penis stiffen once again in anticipation. Hey, Big Mac, I said, are you down there? Came Applejack's lilting voice again, this time more insistent. Big Macintosh replied serenely. I sure am, sis. Hey, come down here a minute. I got something to show you. Sure thing. What is it? It's a surprise. Oh boy, I sure do love surprises. Something real nice, I'll bet. Something real nice. <laughs> Big Macintosh looked at the mangled, mutilated remains of the cutie mug crusaders, and his lips curled into a thin smile. Hey, yup. Well, that. Okay. I'm gonna go throw up now. Hope I have fun doing that. Bye.